All right, good morning. I'm calling case number D, 20617313C, Simpson versus Maxwell. Appearances, please. Good morning, Your Honor. Oliver Malgar, bar number 10146, appearing unbundled for the plaintiff, Gregory Simpson, who is present through Blue Jeans. Thank you. Mr. Leventhal? Morning, Judge. How are you today? Doing great, sir. Good. Uh, Todd Leventhal, 8543, on behalf of Ms. Maxwell. She is present uh, via Blue Jeans, like that. All right. Fantastic. Be before we go any further, I, wa I want it to be known. I strictly enforce the rules. Oppositions, counter motions are supposed to be filed 14 days prior to or after being served with the motion. So that way there's an opportunity for a reply and me be able to read everything before a hearing. Okay? I'll forgive it this time, but I have not had an opportunity to read it because I prepare seven days in advance. So. This is mom's motion. No, dad's. No, dad's motion. Sorry, it is dad's motion. So, Mr. Milliger, go ahead, please. Yes, Your Honor, and I'll be brief since you've already read the, the motion. Um, <clears throat> the, the defendant um, didn't answer. There was a complaint filed, um, and there's no answer. She was served properly. I think her excuse was that she didn't have the money to hire a lawyer. However, <clears throat> um, we would say, you know, that's that's not an excuse. There's programs that allow uh, individuals to um, to receive the help that they need uh, free of charge. Um, however, that being said, it's your decision whether to set that aside. We'll make argument on the, our motion. Um, yes, there's been a history. Both both parents have have been in and out of jail. Um, my client went uh, was in jail for a year. Uh, the child was born after the child was born after he. Uh, came out of jail, he was able to have contact with the child. Um, the mother as well, she was on probation. Uh, she was put uh, in a sober link house. She has a history of drug use. Um, my client has concerns that there's drug use going on in the home she's at. He would like her drug tested today. He is willing to pay for that. And if she comes back positive, that he be uh, reimbursed. Um, however, this is a case of what's in the best interest of the child. Uh, the father has had contact, has shared custody with the, with the mom. Um, just recently, uh, three weeks ago, he had Thursday through Sunday. But this is a case where the father is saying that uh, the mom limits his contact or takes away his contact just on her whim, just uh, whatever she wants to do. Um, if dad was such a bad guy, you know, she wouldn't allow overnight. She wouldn't give him contact. She wouldn't do a shared custody arrangement with my client. Um, we want what's best for the child, and he's not trying to take the child away from the mom, even though he defaulted her. He's not looking to take her custody away. What he's looking for is a joint physical custody arrangement that is set, so she can't come and take his time away. Um, the father's currently working. I believe he filed a financial disclosure form. Um, there's an R case already that, that determined child support. Um, however, there's no determination of, of what the child custody and outside of determination, um, it should, uh, there's a preference for joint physical custody, Your Honor. Um, today, what we're asking for is uh, that the court grant a joint physical custody arrangement. Dad is looking from Thursday um, in, uh, in the evening until Sunday in the evening. Um, and then uh, he's okay to get sent to mediation. Um, and then uh, this temporary schedule may be worked out in mediation and, and until we return, Your Honor. And I'll reserve any argument after uh, opposing counsel. Mr. Leventhal? Thank you, Judge. Judge, obviously we don't default people if they're a few days late when it comes to custody issues. This is not a divorce. There's no money involved. This is a peer. So the default should, by order of law, be set aside. And the reasons for my client not getting a chance were outlined in my response. That's first and foremost. So I don't think that should be an issue. What is an issue is the timing. We've got Nicole, who's seven years old. Gregory has had a sporadic, if that, uh, in, uh, um, times with uh, his daughter, mostly just Saturday and Sunday. That's all it's been. Until, Judge, I'm showing you what's been sent from the office of the district attorney. October 27th, 2020, was sent an order for Mr. 
uh, Maxwell's child support to go from $100 a month, where he was paying $26 a week, up to $700 based on the fact that he's working, he's employed as a welder, he's making a good living. She is not employed, but uh, October 27th, 2020, October 27th. When does he file this? He files this motion for joint custody uh, a little over a month later because he was upset that his, his, his payments were going up. He filed it on 12-4. So 10-27, he gets notice his, his uh, child support's going up. All of a sudden, one month later, he wants now joint custody. Why do you think he wants joint custody, Judge? You've been around for a minute or two. So have I. We all see this. This is playbook, textbook. Okay, dad comes in, doesn't want to spend any more money than he has to, has, has very limited time with his child for seven years. All of a sudden, he's now got his foot in the fire with having to pay child support. He knows it. We all know it. We've seen this before. This is just one of the more obvious ones because of the timing issue. A month later, he files for joint physical. Uh, counsel then says that my client is on drugs. She's this, she's that. But oh, we don't want to take the child away from her. We just want joint. Why do you think he wants joint? Again, it's down to a money issue. Judge, what's been happening for seven years is basically dad has come in and out. My, my client, I talked to her this morning, doesn't want to take away any time from him, but she would like to keep it the way it is, which is what it's been. He comes in on, on a Saturday, picks her up on a, on a Saturday, drops her off on a Sunday or Friday night, and then drops her off on Sunday. Um, she doesn't have a problem with that every other weekend and then maybe during the week having some time with uh, Nicole, uh, like a Wednesday and a Thursday in the off weekends. That would be fine. I think that's something that's doable, that that's what has been done. They can go to mediation all they want, but that's what she wants. It's every other weekend uh, that, and, and then uh, Wednesday or Thursday on the weekends that uh, is, he's not with uh, Nicole. I would submit it on that, Judge. And, and obviously, there is a, this open uh, district attorney, uh, but we need to reevaluate uh, what his, uh, what his uh, financial affidavit said, which would probably be about that $700 mark is where he would be at with the new formula on uh, child support. Real quick, Mr. Leventhal, what is your client on probation for? My client is not on probation. I think what he's referring to was seven years ago when my client uh, was on probation and my and Mr. Maxwell, I guess, was in prison at the time. He, she's not on probation right now. That was, I think that's what he's referring to. All right, I'm, I'm gonna send her down to, for drug testing. Let's just be safe. So I'm well, gonna then, go ahead, then, I'm gonna send her down for drug testing. I want her there by 2 p.m. this afternoon. We'll, we'll, both parties, Judge? What was that? Both parties? Do you want both parties? I want both parties then. If okay, it good then both the parties are going to go down drug testing. Each of you are going to pay for the other one's drug test. I, d I don't want the not being paid for as a reason why it didn't come back. Both of you are going to report by 2 p.m. this afternoon. I'm going to set aside the default because these issues do need to be tried on the uh, merits of the case. I am trying to find out right now what J Dad's recent... Uh, TPO, uh, you said about 700, so I'm, I'm showing that we've got a notice of a telephonic hearing, notice of a motion, but I don't see any new orders in here yet, so I'm not too sure about that. So um, the order, he objected to the orders, Judge, that's why there's no, that's what the hearing is for. Okay. But that's, that's what they came right. out with, sorry. But on his income, based upon his financial disclosure form and everything right now, his child support is going to be set at $654 a month. I am going to oh, hold it. No, never mind. Hold on. His child support should be set at $654 a month, but I am going to allow joint legal and joint physical to, uh, custody temporarily. Because I don't have anything in the record that gives me any reason on why it should not be in that way. You know, there and we've all seen plenty of cases where one parent does withhold the case or withhold the children. We've also seen plenty of cases where the other parent, they don't want anything to do with the child until it comes time to pay child support. So we're going to see which way it is through actions. The, um, 
The visitation is going to be from Thursday at 6 p.m. until Sunday at 6 p.m. temporarily. I'm going to send you all down to Family Mediation Center to try to see if you can mediate a parenting plan and get this thing taken care of. Mom, why are you not working? You need to unmute. Unmute. Um, I was a teamster doing conventions when COVID hit. Okay, well, there's no reason why you can't go out and look for a job. I, I, I want I, you to look for 10, 10, 10 different jobs. You do not have to be working in the same field. That way you don't lose your teamster's position. Okay. All right. Right okay. now, I'm going, I'm going to assume that if you were working, you'd be making 2000 a month. Okay, I'm going to impute an income to you. Okay. Your, chi your, your child support obligation at that would normally be $320. So you subtract the six, or take six fifty four and subtract the $320, child support obligation is going to be $334 a month. Judge, I missed about five minutes of what you just said. I don't know. It said it was resolving issues. What was that, sir? This is Todd Lemethal. I he didn't hear about the last three minutes of what you said. The little thing was going around saying resolving issues. Oh, okay. I'm sorry about that. Uh, what? Which That's was the last thing you heard? I heard you tell mom that she needed to get a job. Okay. She needs to get a job. I'm imputing an income of two thousand a month because if she was working, if she was working minimum wage at Seven Eleven, she'd be close to two thousand a month. So I'm going to impute that. I heard the twenty or the sixteen percent. Of two thousand is three hundred and twenty dollars. You subtract that from six fifty four. It's going to be three, three hundred and thirty four dollars a month for dad to pay to mom for child support. Did you get dad's visitation at Thursday at six p.m. to Sunday at six p.m.? No, ma'am. But can I ask you if you would uh, allow for my client to have at least one weekend a month with her child? She's not working right now, so no. If she was working and that was her only days off, then I would consider it. But she's not working right but now. You, I don't want to argue, but you just told her to go get a job. So now she is, her job is going to be working to find a job. Yeah, but you, most of those you do it online. So you're telling her to get a job, and then when she gets a job, you're going then to Then we will revisit it. it. We're, we're going to be back in six weeks. This is for six weeks. Let's see how well they can co-parent together. Co-parenting is actually working out a schedule that's best for the child. So let's see how they can do it. And and I, would, I would, in the future, I, you know, if y'all can't work out a schedule, I will give her one week in a month, but I will also give makeup time in the middle of the week so that dad still has at least three days every week. I just proposed that, and, though. I'm asking for one week. I think that's and, what's in your honor. In the in the drug test, can we have that if the if either party doesn't show up to the drug test, that it counts as a violation? Absolutely, I will deem it. I will deem it dirty if you're not if you do not show up by two p.m. You want us to prepare the order, Your Honor? Yes, please. We'll do. Mr. Leventhal to sign off on it. Well, return date. March 22nd at 1130 a.m. Are y'all available? I, I couldn't hear that. March 22nd at 11 a.m. 1130. Or 1130, sorry. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Leventhal, are you available? Yes, I'll be available. Dad, what other days would you have, you know, to, so that mom can have quality time and not just school time with the child? What days, what other days would be good for you? Um, any, Your Honor. I'll make it work. You'll make it work. You got, now, Absolutely. you'll have the responsibility for schooling and all this other stuff. I totally understand. Okay, then we're going to give mom that one weekend a month. I was hoping you'd chime in and say, please let her have it, but you didn't. So we're going to go ahead and give her that one weekend a month. I'm going to give mom the third weekend of every month. And we're going to let dad have Tuesday at 6 p.m. until Friday at 6 p.m. 
during the, uh, the, the week prior to. So dad would have Tuesday through Thursday, then mom would have that weekend. And then go back to dad having his Thursday through Sunday on the following weekend. Okay? Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you, Your Thank you. Mr. Melger, pre prepare the order, please. Will do. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. You too.